Bonsoir. Welcome to Top Story. Um, you're here on a very special night. This is the part of the show where we have our stand-up comedian tonight. We have a really brilliant, uh, special, special stand-up comedian. He's one of our favorites. You guys might know him as Garrett from NBC's Community, but we know him. <laughs> is there a doctor nearby? Right? But we know him as. Let me just fix this. Eric Charles Nielsen. They say you can't live in fear. Have they even tried? <laughs> live in Florida. I grew up there. That's where I learned to live in fear. When I was 12 in Florida, my family's air conditioning broke down in May. We could not afford to get it fixed until September. That was maybe one of the 10 worst things that happened that year. It was a lot of competition. I had my first crush that year. Her name was Nicole. I decided to write her a love letter, but I had a problem. At that age, I was mostly known around the school for winning spelling bees and yelling at teachers. <laughs> I actually won the county spelling bee that year. The local newspaper printed an article in which they misspelled my name. <laughs> next to a picture of me wearing a name tag. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to write the love letter. I, I need to come up with an ingenious plan, which I did. I also wrote a second love letter addressed to me from her. <laughs> so if she didn't like the first one, I could show her the other one and say, that's a forgery, much like this letter I received. <laughs> Someone is trying to make fools of both of us. <laughs> <laughs> that year for Halloween, I dressed with my favorite TV character, Worf. <laughs> I got my mom to make a costume, and I got a lot of makeup. The, the, the problem is, no matter how much uh, latex I put on my forehead, blackface is still blackface. <laughs> <laughs> summer, I, I went to a month-long summer program for gifted students, where I was mercilessly bullied by the other gifted students. <laughs> broke into my dorm room and taped over all my Beethoven tapes with They Might Be Giants albums. <laughs> subtle, subtle hierarchy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Forbes magazine uh, recently published an article in which they named Silver Lake the number one hipster neighborhood in America. <laughs> Saying Forbes is not in touch with today's youth. <laughs> but I think they're like 10, 15 years out of date on that. Like, I, I know Sil like if, if Silver Lake was a guy, Silver Lake would have been really into indie rock in the 90s. But now he has a house and a family and a pretty good job in post-production. <laughs> much since his second daughter was born. <laughs> but if you do run into him, he'll buy you a beer and share his elaborate theories on the third Archers of Loaf album. <laughs> Silver Lake bought a tennis racket in 2008 because he needed exercise. He's used it like six times. <laughs> if you're interested, he's looking for a regular opponent. He thinks that would help. <laughs> he also burned the Guided by Voices, best of two, 1997 to 2004. He compiled it himself. He'll, he'll make you a copy. <laughs> he has a mustache. He grew a mustache. It, it, I don't know whether it's because he thinks that's what fatherhood is about, or whether it's his commentary on what he thinks society thinks fatherhood is about. <laughs> Just play tennis with your wife. <laughs> I fear the day that uh, ducks learn to bake their own bread. <laughs> I won't eat for anything. <laughs> Ketamine is a horse tranquilizer, which is why horse raves are so boring. <laughs> so the election happened. I don't, I don't know if that was covered here at any point. Uh, I, I, I think the one thing I have to say about the election is that there are a lot of things you can do with the name Willard. 
<laughs> to make it less Willard. <laughs> and calling yourself Mitt is not one of them. <laughs> like, I, I, I'd, I'd be a lot more worried about Bill Romney. <laughs> it's right there. It's really... Uh, I don't know. I mean, but the Republican Party, I think... The best way to describe what has happened to the Republican Party in the last 50 years is to think of Barry Goldwater, who ran for president as a Republican in 1964 and was considered at the time too extreme to win the election. Whereas today, if Barry Goldwater were to run for president, the Republican Party would have no idea what to do with him because he's dead. <laughs> And I happen to believe that Malcolm Jamal Warner is not qualified to rule. <laughs> My wife is a real person. <laughs> no, I just got the ring for these jokes. Uh, like, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's. I, I went to Goodwill with my wife, wife recently. That's, that's the kind of wife I have. Uh, <laughs> and in the parking lot, there, were, there was a car with two bumper stickers, one of which read, Speeding Kills Bears. <laughs> the other of which read, Don't Shoot Sea Lions. <laughs> that's all the environmental concerns. And this car used the last two. <laughs> we need to come up with more. <laughs> Otters are flammable. <laughs> Most don't want your cocaine! <laughs> My uh, wife is a big fan of Harry Potter, and she came to me with an idea for a Harry Potter themed t shirt. Because she had to tell someone. She said, Alright, the front of the shirt reads, I died when Snape cried. And the back of the shirt reads, I cried when Snape died. <laughs> her idea. I also have an idea for a Harry Potter themed t-shirt. The front of the shirt reads, I died when Snape died. And the back of the shirt reads, I'm Snape. <laughs> I uh, recently moved in with my wife. I uh, recommend it, if only to avoid the questions. <laughs> No, it's good. I, I, I like it, especially because I used to get into a lot of arguments with my roommate. Like, I remember this one time, we were out of bread, and he's going out anyway, so I say, hey, uh, on the way home, can you pick up some bread? He looks at me, he says, what, do I look like I'm made of time? And I say, no, time's an imaginary concept. A person couldn't look like it. And he says, your mom's an imaginary concept. I think my mom is dead. <laughs> and he says, a lot of imaginary concepts are dead. Look at communism. And I say, look at disco. And he says, don't you mean listen to disco? And I say, I don't want to listen to disco. You listen to disco. And he <laughs> says, time's not an imaginary concept. It's a fundamental property of the universe. And I 